Yes, someone was kind enough to tell me that I forgot to turn on the video for the stream. This is my second attempt casting. The preseason is also where I'm learning how to cast games. So I'm thanking all of the observers here for their patience and for their advice and feedback. So that's been just great. And your award is a little patience by Gilbert and Sullivan. If you're anxious for to shine in the high aesthetic line as a man of culture rare, you must get up all the germs of the transcendental terms and plant them everywhere. You must lie upon the daisies and discourse in noble phrases of your complicated state of mind. The whole meaning doesn't matter if it's only idle chatter of a transcendental kind. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if this young man expresses himself in terms too deep for me, why, what a most particularly deep young man this deep young man must be. Oh, uh, in terms of the worker scouts, Demosthenes has a huge advantage. He saw the reaper, he kept his alive, some stutter stepping beat the opponent's uh, worker scout, and now the only question is, can he possibly survive against the reaper? That damage the barracks. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Repairing that is going to cost maybe two or three minerals that could have been better spent elsewhere. Uh, apparently, Night Fury. Maybe he hasn't played since Wings of Liberty. Reapers no longer do that much damage against buildings. Such a big change to the units. It's really like Terran got three new units. Ooh, and there he goes, delaying the command center against the Reaper away. And of course, they're now hooked on drugs. <coughs> Another big change. Just sit there and survive. Whereas the Marines, they've got the bad drugs. I don't know why they aren't just sharing their drugs. Maybe there's some side effects when you mix and match without a doctor's prescription. Got double gas from both. We've got command center, starport. Ooh, ooh, Reaper's going up. It's going to scout. It's going to see the factory. Mothsnake's being a little slower in his tech, but a little faster on his expand, or at least would be if it weren't for that Reaper. And he's going to get any pro uh, CB kills here as well? No. He's happy to just scout. He knows his place. Which is attacking the SCVs building this command center, but it's done now. No longer that much of a delay. It can become an orbital post haste. Ooh, ooh. Big supply block for Night Fury. He wants that Hellion drop out. He wants to just squeeze out that Hellion drop so bad, but it's just not coming without a little more help. That block. There we go. Command Center finishes before the supply depot to unsupply block him. And you know, Hellion drop against Terran? Surprisingly good. Usually they'll have, you know, Marines, and if you get enough. Uh, Hellions, or Hellbats, even better. They just toast the Marines. The missile turret, though. That's gonna stop things. Wonder if he, um, I didn't notice him, but he may very well have scouted that. Maybe he's just used to some sort of Banshee harass. So we've got a Hellion and four Marines. Not stopping to kill the Wapbot. So it's going to be doing a drop up here, and that's going to be a good positioning. The Moth is way out of position up here at his ramp. He's got nothing to see there. Might be able to swoop in, grab some SCV kills. There's one reason why you want to have the supply depot sort of up here, so that you'll see, you'll lose a supply depot, but you'll get your troops there in time uh, to defend. And, yeah, he, he may have seen it. Or intuition. Oh, and... Greedy Night Fury going straight up into the missile turret. That delay, giving enough time for the Moth needs to get his troops up. And he's got way more troops, plus they've got these cool bayonets when it comes to melee. Oh, uh, Night Fury also has the cool skin. And now, try and hit the other side. But the troops are ready. Running to the safety of the bunker. Yeah. And just another pick up and get out of there. It's really a shame that the Hellions don't count as biological, but they do when they're in Hellbat form. If that was a Hellbat, then the Medivac would just heal it right up, and this harass would continue almost indefinitely. Ah, uh, now we're starting to clear out that flank. Siege tank denies any sort of drop harass there. 
That medevac's probably just going to run home by now. He's got some good defense. The moth knees got his expansion up nicely. His turret to be supply blocked. Getting all that good tech going. Night Fury, of course, expanded as well. The work counts fairly even slightly to the favor of Night Fury. So that looks like that may have distracted him, that and the Reaper harass. Giving Night Fury a bit of a lead, but none of those losses in the army. Definitely. Yeah. I could be wrong. Still close enough for now. We'll have to see what happens with these tanks, with these cloak banshees. This extra command center. You know, I never noticed that Hover was a subtype. But it's there, just for those special critters. No Hover tanks here. Uh, I loved how in Dark Rain, the tanks for the Imperium were all Hover tanks, and you could just retreat across rivers, and the rebel scum with their treaded tanks, they could do nothing. Ooh, Cloak Banshee, that was a very early Cloak. <laughs> For, for energy efficiency reasons, we recommend that you leave the cloak off until after you arrive in your opponent's house. Oh, <laughs> he revealed the Banshee, drawing the opponent's army back. And if that siege tank was deployed ahead of time, this could be a wonderful trap. But no, no, Night Fury sieges first, cleans this up quite easily. It looks like he might even lose the Banshee, who's run out of cloaking energy. Didn't bring the extra large batteries this time. Fort Hellions might be a misrally. Could actually do a lot just by running around. There's this very wide ramp on Dayless Point. Makes it very hard to wall off your natural. Um, some turns don't even try it. Mothneys is kind of, I suppose, going for it. Not, not really worrying about it that much, but it does mean there's this wide angle where the Hellions could slip in. Or they could just walk right into the bunker. I mean, they have options. And exercising their freedom of choice is how these Hellions feel like less than just a pawn in someone else's game. Ah, but really, he needs to reposition these tanks the, 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 with that decisive victory there earlier with Night Fury. He's got a definite army advantage, and the Moth is going to need everything he has to hold this off. And it's not even clear where it's heading. Is it going to elevate her up into the main base where there's all, where there's more troops than at the front? There it is. He loses a full medevac. There's the point siege tank. Ow! And just fine. I think he goes up way less score. He does have vision. All that Orbital Command needs to do is lift up the two tanks to go up a bit. This is to take it one for the team. The tanks doing this low on real tanks. And the Banshee can clean this up, so... It's bad engagement with my Night Fury over there. Should have scanned up on the high ground before coming in. And now, this attempt to counterattack. It's not really enough to counterattack with, but it just might scare him. Uh, and the scan's dissipated. There's the scan again. <laughs> and he gets a tank. Super tank. And that was surprisingly even trade. We got some really fun skirmishes happening here. You can no longer really tell who's ahead according to the worker count. We would say that Night Fury's ahead. According to the unit's loss, we would probably say Demosthenes is ahead. Third base is definitely making me lean towards Night Fury, but with stuff like that, attempt to drop it, anything can happen. It's definitely feeling though like it's going to be more of a long-term style TVT. I should go get my dinner shortly. Uh, probably everyone on the East Coast is having dinner right now in the middle of this game because they know that they'll have time. One drop scouted before it starts. Banshees from one side. Cloaked, of course. Because that's how they arrive in style. Just waiting for the drop to start before they go head on with the missile turret. Oh, and excellent timing here. He gets to get there before the missile turret goes up. <laughs> one 
second or less away. And there's the pickup bringing the army for the defensive drop back home. And Mothi almost gets out alive, not quite. The Banshees, the synchronized attack, kind of needed a bit of help. You know, in Supreme Commander, there's actually a synchronized attack option where you can queue up orders such that two groups of units will wait and do the final attack move, start that at the same time. I've never used it, but it's a cool idea. <laughs> Even with that help from the UI, synchronized attacks are really hard to pull off. And I have a feeling now that Demosthenes is going to be even more impressed the next time he sees it in WCS. <laughs> that detection range. Detection range is OP. So there's that defensive Viking. Got these strong defensive lines up. Still mostly bio from Night Fury. Same with Demosthenes. He's got, he's got his third and he's brought the mules to town to start strip mining it. Might be able to catch up economically here. Um, really hard to say, but the two's ahead still. I mean, losing all those medevacs from the profit stuff. Demosthenes just hasn't had time to replenish his medevacs. The fact that he has one starport with a tech lab is not helping. Looks like he's aiming to transition to mech, though. Might not really need medevacs at that point. And, well, mech could work. If he, ooh, here's the big trying to drop up with the sea from the low ground again. We've got secret missile. Huge connection for the secret missile. Take on the uh, bit scared away there. <laughs> I, I, I think Demosthenes can hold this quite well, but we'll, we'll have to see. Night Fury's getting a chance to come right there. There's the, there's the bio. Trying to get, trying to just stay out of sea drinks. Just running. Oh, that's going to come around with the flank attack. The portal there. Not quite synchronized. All the workers get stuck there in the section of the tank. That, that kind of works. <laughs> Synchronized attack on that line. Didn't actually get that many worker kills there. Trying to drop the same with it. This tank is just besieged their party all day long. I'm going to try to make something happen. Need a scan. But yeah, Night Fairy just spent most of his army. Did not get very many worker kills at all. So, an excellent defense by Demosthenes, as long as he doesn't leave his SCVs here idle, where they're as good as dead, then that was a brilliant defense. And I think that swings the game around again. Night Fury is pulling back. Demosthenes is in the middle of a successful switch to mech, and he just has so many tanks now. I don't think that bio is going to work. Night Fury really needs, even with 2-2 coming right up now, he really needs to tech switch, in my opinion. Because Bio is just not going to remain viable against those tanks, unless the tanks are out of position. I mean, if the tanks are out of position, it's anyone's game, but... Watch what happens when the Marines follow. Oh, they're not good control. So he's not falling for it this time. Oh, he lost. He's a little over-eager to start mining again. They're heading back up into the base. That Widow Mine is just never going to die at this rate. The defensive sea sinks a little far back. Seizing the low ground, I'm like, oop, SCV small, we're going to trap that, everything. Really clean this up. I, I think that Siege Shake might be the way, but yeah, another great defense by Demosthenes. Lost a few more workers that time. The worker count definitely favoring Night Fairy, but not enough to compensate for those constant continued losses. Demosthenes can just reposition his tank line to get a few less of those. Uh, Side attacks coming into the flank. He can hold these three bases definitely and just win in a war of attrition. It's like Night Fury wants to do the same thing. Look at the siege tank line. Very, very liney. Good coverage. Actually, a little thin against the bio, but against another tank line. Which might just be what's coming up here. We've got, wow, that's 15 tanks here. No SCVs, which is normally the secret sauce for mech. They're coming in the middle. Who sieges first? Mossy sieges a bit too slow, but he has so many tanks. Then boom! They're going to steam, and get water, and get a tank, and he picks up and gets out of there. Well, I mean, he lost 
lost a lot of tanks in that battle, but we really need to siege up early. That's the real, the easy way to defeat siege tanks is attack while they're sieging. And despite the fact Dumasi's arm was so much better there, I don't think that was a great engagement for him. Still Night Fury seems cowed. He's hanging back on the defensive, taking his fourth, which was just spotted. Look at those Marines go. Taking their drugs with with a lot of zest. Ooh. And delay the command center again. Less than a second away from finishing one timing. I don't know if the Marines are going to hold it because they've been taking way too many drugs. <laughs> Winners don't take drugs, or if they do, they use them in discretion. With discretion, anyone watching that would obviously know that they were taking drugs. Just how else do you get into that situation? But yeah, there's the unfinished command center. Yet another reason to build them in your base. Look at the fly distance from here to there. It's just the safe way to play it. And if we've seen anything from Night Fury's play. We've seen that he's not safe. He's bold. He's daring. He just goes in there and drops on the high ground. And you know, it might work this time because the tanks are all on siege. And then he's positioning them instead of sieging. He, as long as he doesn't decide to siege halfway through. Actually, a good strategy here is in these bad situations to siege like a cat. Forget the marauders that don't siege. Don't the marauders siege tanks. That's the insane in front of the area. But one thing. That Demosthenes is missing with Thors for the AA. A few Thors would just clean up these medevacs, which have been around the whole time. They had a kills watch to count of how many, of how much battle they've seen. It would be through the roof. Three, three for the Marines, getting close to the three attacks for Demosthenes. I mean, Bio versus Mech. You need to exploit the maneuverability advantage that Bio has, and always attacking the main. Not sure Night Fury's done it. Some great attempts at the flanking, at the dropping, but... You know, I think Demosthenes can hold, and if the game just keeps lengthening out, alright, Night Fury's a base ahead, but losses... well... He's only lost about 4,000 more resources. That's a far cry from a full base. There we go, Planetary Fortress. Is be secure against all the Ling run bys and Marine run bys. Ooh, more troops coming again. Out of position, not siege. You really need to. Can we see it this time? Is he gonna siege in time? He sieges in time. Night Fury backs off. Very smart move. Oh, and he's got some tanks on siege. That's good. He could sort of move the siege up gradually. It takes a lot of micro though. No, oh, he's gonna try and lift it. Going for the long drop. One missile turret won't be enough to stop this. When will the Melissonese find out? Missile turret, not even in the right place, Mike. There we go. Big drop by Night Fury. Kind of. Yeah, there we go. Easily taking this, uh, find out expansion. Finally, the C-6 will pull up the main. He could actually put it up the main. Here's the mech army just sort of haphazard trying to get there. Finally, with the Thors, there's the bio army just running, showing that superior speed right into the Cloyd siege tank. Ouch. And it's cleaned up. We lost the non mining base. He's got plenty of spare SCVs. He's moving over there. Don't know how decisive that was. And this time he got the medevacs. If you ask me, that's a big deal. We'll see. The, the resources lost is still slowly getting more and more in favor of the Montanese. But he needs to keep getting that income. He's down to two mining bases. He's trying to strip mine this as fast as possible. That one's almost out. And here is his sole mining base. If this goes, he's in big trouble. The attempt to expand not working. There's the siege tanks preparing for plantry. Not sure how they're going to hold off this massive mech army. Now we've got these stores. Plus three attack Thors. Uh, yeah, ooh. Smashing. And the SCV transfer. They found out. Planetary's not quite up yet. 
you can get it for the planetary or the mech army. The stem, the STV that are repairing, you might actually get the planetary. That, that would be big. That keeps causing it down to basically one mining base to get that next chance that they need. Not sure he's paid all that bad. The resource is lost now, getting closer to over 5,000. But look at all these bases. Got two. No, he's only on two mining bases as well, actually. So if it's two mining bases to, well, one right now, that one. <laughs> they don't even need to siege. Ooh, this is going to turn away, and I think this might. Well, he's going to go out. He's now got a definite advantage. He's got an income advantage. He's got an uh, army size, a body advantage, necklace, and bio. All those bad trades for Night Fury slowly catching up with him. Unless he goes forward and makes one really big super trade. He's trying to bring the lab bot with him. The lab bot is now an honorary member of Night Fury's army. Does it add a science bonus? No. No, he's, he's been rejected. No one likes the science bot. But yet, so much of the most of these armies away. Bio could really tear it up. And in a base race, I, I'm inclined. And the Bio with the Snip Marauder for Siege Tank, it's really hard to say. Probably the Marauders for damage the buildings. Oh, here's the reinforcement wave. We've got Siege Tanks, Thors, and the all important hellback to take damage. Oh, it's close. But if he holds this off, this is this nice very saving grace. He still has some troops there, but because of that split, the reinforcements, they're not gonna be stuck well enough to ramp to be able to easily hold the uh main. He's got no Pedavax elevator. In the meantime, the Thor siege tank line is still managing to contain of course, pushing these buildings back. I mean, you can normally push the units back, but only in, uh, t with Terran can you actually push the base back. And he hasn't switched to high-impact payload. Much better against buildings. Not sure it's worth it here. Siege tank line, with, with the Thor stuck in it to make sure that he provides cover. I don't know, it looks like there was an attempt to transition here to air. I mean, 30 minutes, definitely the time to transition to air with Terran, just a bit slow, because now he's moved, lost the comments, this is his last mining base here in Thor to get in. Oh, about to try to sneak past. Reinforcements are there to hold on to base, while keeping his main alive, he's pushing into that final, all important base for Night Fury. Got the siege tanks, he's taking it calmly and coolly. Contain, starve. Slow territory denial style of map. I love the switch to Sky Terran Banshee with Cloak, but it might have come too late. Night Fury still has a bank. He still has a chance. He can attempt this. Thor's going to shred Banshees when they can see them. There's no Ravens. <laughs> okay, there's, there's, this is a good way to train your minerals. <laughs> oh, he doesn't need some auto repair. Looks away, the planetary forces are down, the SCP is finished repairing, it's not repairing on our repair order. Really fun, I said that auto repair, but that's still your deep saw, there goes the income. Night Fury just dropping off there. He's gonna try and make something happen. He should load up the SCV so they don't have to walk past the command, the siege tanks. But now with the reinforcements, looks like the Mothney's correctly guessed the bio. And then here comes the first wave of Banshee. Going to go to town on the same line. When will of course come in to show that massive damage is done. Massive explosive damage is done. No Thor's. I think he wants to hit the mineral line. The mineral line's gone! Where's that mineral line? There was no mineral line. I think the Banshee is going to be able to clear all this up. Demosthenes going for the missile turret approach. Another good uh, mech anti-air strategy. Missile turrets everywhere. <laughs> SCVs versus missile turrets might be able to clear this up. Where are those Thors? The Thors are over there chasing the flying buildings. Oh, there, there's one Thor. One Thor has a chance. Oh, and they're cloaked. No raven. There we go. And this, these banshees have a chance to up some massive kills. All the tanks spread out all over. The missile turrets are not with the tanks. And the Banshees can even take out missile turrets, but we cost it. But yeah, you can just take out all the tanks and maybe bring these command centers back. 
And of course, SCVs. This is your plan? What, you run out of Marines? Yes, I did run out of Marines. They all lost, fell in that suicidal attack on the main. Okay, I have one Viking. Will that scare off the six Banshees? No, but Thor's are back. Alright, that's 18 times 4 explosive damage times 4 Thor's. There goes the Banshees and the GG. Such an advantage for Night Fury early game, but just a slow transition. Mech beats Bio. It's not exactly rock, paper, scissors, but in this case, very close. I believe this actually ties it up to all.